But if I'm feeling bad, that doesn't mean I'm doing bad. That doesn't mean I am bad. That doesn't mean that I can't still take some action. Because yeah, nothing changes and nothing changes, man. You know, we'll sit around forever wondering, well, what if I, you know, what if I was a dog catcher? Would I be the best? Would I be able to do it? Would I, you don't know until you say, yeah, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to take action. Nothing changes if nothing changes, man. And I'm not preaching at you, I'm just, I just want to remind you because, you know, I've spent a lot of time in my life sitting around wanting things to change and not being able to make them change and, and not thinking I could. And I wish somebody had told me that earlier sometimes, that in order for something to change, there needs to be change. In life, folks, you cannot change your life unless you change something. If you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. No matter what it is. Many times you say to yourself, I got to lose weight, I got to lose weight. I'm too fat. And then you know what? During the day you eat, you eat at night, and the next day you get mad at yourself. Well, what do you want? What do you want? You got to change something. Well, you know, a lot of actors, you know, I don't want to go see that. You know, I, they feel funny. They don't want to see a director or see people. I go, no. You got to try. You got to get out there. You got to fake it till you make it. Do something. The fear is never reaching your potential. That's it. That always falling short, always quitting before you're done, always procrastinating, always yep. not doing the right thing. And then one day you're an old man. Yep. And you look back and go, God, I could have been great. Yep. I could have been great. To those who have everything, more will be given. From those who have nothing, everything will be taken. It's like what's very pessimistic in some sense because it means that as you start to fail, you fail more and more rapidly. But it also means that as you start to succeed, you succeed more and more rapidly. And so you take an incremental step and, well, now you can lift 55 pounds instead of 52.5 pounds. You think, well, what the hell is that? It's like, it's one step on a very long journey. And so it's, it, and it starts to compound on you. So a small step today means, puts you in a position to take a slightly bigger step the next day. And then that puts you in a position to take a slightly bigger step the next day. And you do that for two or three years, man, you're starting to stride. And before he would ever try to do any kind of business, he'd spend literally days or weeks writing up a business plan first. And you might say, oh, well, that sounds like a sound like business decision, but guess what? He never actually implemented any of those business ideas. You've got to understand like this creative insight, this burning desire that you have to work and to achieve results. It doesn't last forever. And sometimes you need to captivate on it straight away and tell yourself, okay, there is something easy I can do with, you know, ease, low friction, easy. And it's not deep work. I can do it whilst listening to music. I can do it in a nice coffee shop. <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. It's not going to get you the results that you want, bro. The results that you really want in most of your self-improvements and entrepreneurship and making money and all these like big things, really the results that you want is that hard thing that you don't want to do. What I'm saying is you're not going to know. So choose, live, and then if it works out, great. And if it doesn't, adjust. Everybody thinks they can have the perfect decision. There is no perfect decision. There's just life. Someone that overthinks things, they get analysis paralysis, right? They just start thinking and thinking and thinking they're frozen from their own thoughts too many thoughts and so I thought these were good little factors here and it basically to me it all boils down to actually fear because mm -hmm. if you're thinking then you're not taking action and if you're not taking action then there's no consequence and if there's no consequence then there's nothing to be afraid of mm -hmm. so I think that the overthinking can be an excuse for actual fear. And same thing with like, oh, I'm a perfectionist. That's also fear. It's fear of not being perfect. And then on top of that, low confidence. Well, if you have low confidence, guess what? You're afraid. Your confidence is low. You're not sure of yourself. So you sit around and think about doing it instead of actually doing it. This wasn't built for you. I'm 41 years old. I didn't grow up with this shit either, but I figured it out. You figured out how to drive, you figured out how to be a parent, you figured it all out. And with the health trends and the way the world is now, you've got a long life in front of you. So instead of sitting in that job for the next 10 years, go do your thing. You've got plenty and plenty of time. No matter what's going on in your life, it's not permanent. Everything is going to change. So there's two things you can do with change. You can react to it or you can participate in it. It's gonna change anyway. 
So if you keep waiting around, you're going to have to react to the change. And now you, you're behind. But if you participate in the change, if you know the job you have is not going to last forever. I'm just telling you. COVID proved that already. Where you go to work at every day, that's going to change. COVID proved that already. Your best laid plans has changed. So what you got to start doing is you got to start anticipating that it's going to change and just start living your life with the preparation for change. No matter what you're doing, you could be doing more. Remember that. At one time, I was running by a graveyard and I was fucking just trying to become, I was fat. And I ran by a graveyard and I looked out there and I have all these epiphanies, man. I have all these fucking moments of like, of it's crazy, man, of, of this thought. Cause I'm always by myself. I'm always in deep fucking thought about how to be better. And I look out there, I'm like, man, I wonder how many of you motherfuckers in there fucking just are so upset with how you lived your life mm. and fucking just regret how you lived it. And I'm running at 300 pound man thinking, man, don't fucking die like this, bro. Don't die like this. So people wonder where this shit comes from from me. It, it, it comes from such deep thought of trying to see what this is all about. What is this life all about? What am I all about? Why am I here? It doesn't matter where you are in life. It really doesn't. Because the great thing about life is it's always your next move. Your next move that counts. No matter where you are, you could be, look, I was dead broke. My electric bill was being shut off. And there were, obviously there were people even like worse off than I was. It doesn't matter. You could change your life if you want to. It's always your next decision. So it's up to you. I'm always waiting for everything to be perfect before I live my life. As soon as these things line up, I'm going to live my life. You can't wait for everything to be perfect to start living your life. Because I've, I've been, that's what I've done. My whole life has been like that. Inside of me it has been. As soon as it's all lined up, I'm going to show you myself. As soon as I've got it all looking the way I want, I'm going to show up for you. I'm never going to get to that where everything's okay, where everything looks a certain way. And in the meantime, I'm burning the best time I do have available. I'm burning that candle up. I'm burning this candle down and I'm saying as soon as it gets bright enough or warm enough in here, I'm going to show up. But the candle's getting smaller. Write down all the things that you're afraid of and avoiding that are necessary for you to do to move forward, right? So these would be things that you're not doing that you know you need to do in order for you to move to where you want to move. And so you need to make a pretty exhaustive list of those. Then you need to break each of those down. You need a strategy and a written strategy would be very helpful. You need a, a strategy of exposure. You know, I mean, like maybe you're behind on your tax documents, let's say, you know, or there's some other stack of paperwork sitting on your desk that you're not attending to because you're afraid. And may, there may be lots of things in your life that you're not attending to because you're afraid. And so, first of all, you want to admit to what those things are, and you can ask yourself that. Then you want to write them down. Then you want to come up with a strategy for starting to, to deal with them. You know, so like if it's a stack of unpaid bills that you're terrified of, and that you've been avoiding for a few months or even worse, you're going to be pretty damn afraid to even take a look at the problem. But it'll in almost inevitably be the case that if you take a look at the problem, a detailed look, the reality will be less terrifying than the specter that your imagination has conjured forth. And maybe the first thing, the thing you can do for the first day when you decide to actually turn around and face the dragon, let's say, is all you'll do is open the file folder without, with all your with all the documentation of what you're avoiding in it and just glance through it, like for five minutes, just to break that paralysis. You know, or maybe you have to 
Spend 15 minutes gathering the dispersed documents that are in whatever the hell passes for your filing system together so they're all in one place. Some move forward. And so what you want to do is you want to think about what it is that's producing negative emotion in you, your doubts and your concerns. And then you want to develop a strategy of incremental approach. I would say ask her out. No matter who she is, whether she's a job or a new city or, or an actual person. You know, whether, whether she's uh, an opportunity or a fear, you know. If you're afraid of heights, ask her out. Hey, heights. What you doing tonight? You know, like, whatever she is, man, ask her out. You know, the saddest things in my life, I remember almost touching a girl's body one time, and uh, she wanted me to, so I wasn't, you know, everybody was awake, and, but, uh, but I didn't try to. And she was beautiful. And I was beautiful, dude, I was young. And man, I, I just... If I could go back to that moment and just not be afraid, just, just recognize that I, look, whatever could be out there, I could have it. 